and as you may have been able to tell from both that intro and of course the title of this video, today we are going to be talking about outlining a 1 to 4 chord progression. Now I've been focusing a little bit more on this over on my Patreon page, my weekly guided practice routine this week, looked at lots of different ways that we can navigate these chord changes, but I thought it would be fun to bring some of these ideas over to YouTube, so if you want to get backing tracks for all of this type of stuff, I've been creating tons of backing tracks to outline these chord progressions and we're going to be delving much more deeply into playing over chord changes over the coming months, then please do consider checking out the link in the description to my Patreon page and get access to my weekly guided practice routines. You'll get over 40 hours of content if you join us now. Anyway, so what is a 1 to 4 chord progression? Well, you saw guitar in the intro, but of course over the last two years I have been learning to play the piano and I definitely use it a lot more when uh, experimenting with and expressing harmony now. I don't currently teach piano, so if you want to check out Piano, to link in the description, you can get a free trial over there. That's where I learned to play the piano. Uh, big fan of what those guys are up to. So in the key of C, which is where our backing track is, uh, a 1 to 4 simply refers to the degrees of the scale on which chords are built. So this particular backing track is in the key of C, so our first chord is going to be C, and our second chord, C, D, E, F, is going to be an F. It really is as simple as that. Of course, this is going to change depending on the key that you're in, key signatures as a subject for another day but in its most basic form in C major uh, we will be going from a C chord as our one moving up to the four now we don't play those notes in between but one two three four so C and F now of course if I play that for you we're going to have something that's going to sound like this That's a one to four chord movement. Um, very common. We definitely hear it all over the place in songwriting, popular songwriting. The thing that is interesting about this from a guitar perspective and from a theory perspective is how we go about choosing to solo over that. Now, I said that both of those chords are in the key of C, and they absolutely are. C major is in the key of C. It's the first chord in the key of C. And F major is the fourth chord in the key of C. So step one in soloing over something like this might be just considering that we can use the notes of the C major scale. which isn't how I personally like to do this. And that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about. So based on the style of music that I listen to and the style of music that I play, it's blues influenced music, it's country influenced music, it's jazz influenced music, it's even gospel influenced music. And the first step of playing like musicians that play in those set in settings is learning to treat each of our chords, our major chords, as though they were dominant chords. So that's the thing that I want you to, to pay attention to when you're looking at this vocabulary. Although you could look at this and say, well, the correct scale to play over the C would be C major, and the correct scale to play over the F would really be C major or F Lydian. That's not what I'm doing here. I don't like the way that sounds. I'm going to be playing C mixolydian or C dominant over the C major chord, which is... And when that chord shifts to F, my perspective is indeed going to change and I'm going to play. Which, I mean, it's kind of like a combination of the major scale and using a bit of blues, right? We know that. That sort of sound, we like the sound of that. Um, so I'm bringing in the bluesier flat seven. That's the thing that I wanted you to really consider when we're looking at each one of these licks. Sometimes I'm going to hear, uh, or you're going to hear the flat seven played over each one of these chords. And sometimes, uh, I'm, well, actually, not sometimes, all the time, you're going to hear the same basic idea of playing minor third, resolving. Now, just as a final example, when I play a 1-4-5, sorry, 1-4, that's me just sticking to the one chord in my uh, right hand. But to give you the flavor that we're actually going to be playing here, I'm going to mix up the chords that I'm playing in my right hand, but keeping the bass 
on the uh, on the one and then on the four. That's going to give us this sound. That's the sound that you hear all the time in, in blues and in gospel music and in soul music. and So that's the sound that we're going for. Let's jump on over to the guitar and I'm going to show you these licks. They're going to sound like this. So we're using the Brent Mason telly today. And the focus behind this, of course, I'm a triad-based player. I like to be able to see my harmony. So no matter where I am on the instrument, if I know where C is, I need to be able to know where F is. If I know where C is, I need to know where F is. If I know where C is... I need to know where F is, because I can't really outline those changes. without being able to know where my uh, where my actual chords are that's really important to me and a big part of the way that I think about things and the big part uh, sorry a big part of the way that I need to teach things so um yeah we are going to be talking definitely triads or thinking triads when we're playing these and I'm going to walk you through the thought process behind each one of these licks so let's bring up this page for you now what you can see here, this is the guitar profile that I've made for the um, for you to practice along to. And when you press play on this, there is a backing track behind it, which will sound like this. Probably don't need the guitar to be as loud as that when you're practicing, of course. And you can adjust all of this in Guitar Pro and get it where you want it to be. You can set up loops and the like. Um, should all make sense. So let's take a look at what we've actually got going on here. So we begin down at the fifth fret. Now this for me is A-shaped triad territory. And I'm quickly shifting up. Now this, of course, this 9 and 8 on the uh, G and high E strings, this is just part of my E-shaped triad. So couldn't really outline the sound of the chord more effectively than that and that in fact from there when we shift up these two notes 12 and 12 these are just part of that c major triad up at the 12th fret and we're kind of going to come back down to that e-shaped triad so this for c major we're playing that really outlines those chords or oh, sorry that chord So my ear is much more effective than just taking a scale. And just sort of playing nonsense around it. Um, I like really outlining the sound of my chord. So we end uh, at the 8th fret area. I'm going to transition to this A-shaped triad for F. And the phrase that I'm actually going to play will actually, believe it or not, start with the B flat triad. We're going to go. If I highlight that part on screen. So we're outlining the B flat triad, which is that, this sound. Resolving to our F. Now, of course, the idea just playing that far is that we can hear our chord progression when we do that. If I go three, four. And the ending phrase. That's just a phrase that I like to play around my A-shaped chord. Let's bring me up on screen so we can see that nice and clearly. Play that phrase all the time. So now we've got C to F. 
going to outline our chord changes in a really musical way in fact if i bring the backing track on with that and play along with it that's going to sound like this lick <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at that next lick what are we doing here simple phrase over the c major chord that looks a lot like a c7 sound like this phrase all fits nicely around that e-shaped chord you can make it a little less bluesy by not playing the b flat you can play an a both of those are going to work really well the fun part is this transition, this transitionary um, lick that I'm going to play. Lots of 16th notes here, so take your time with this. We are playing basically C7, but the part that's interesting, of course, is here you're going to see a descending B-flat major triad. Uh, and if you remember my video from last week on seven sus licks, this is that concept. We're playing B-flat triads over C major chords uh, to create a C7 sus sound. So if I play this really slowly... our basic idea now if i stitch that over the first chord then we need to resolve to our f chord now to do that i can see very clearly my f chord triad chord so i'm going to play which really spells out that chord I like my sixths because, you know, I play a lot of soul music. Sixths are very common in soul music, so... Uh, play the whole part up until there. We have... And I've got this nice, a really gospel-sounding finish to it. We go... Like neo-soul... If I play the whole lick, C to F, it's nice that it's a F major hammer onto the B flat, F major, I guess this would be a G minor, resolving to an F major triad, really outlines those, um, uh, gives you that gospel sound really, really effectively. So again, let's play it with the track, sounds like this. Nice and effective uh, use of vocabulary. Now, our final lick. Again, we're actually going to use something that we used last week in our seven sus licks over the C7 chord. So this phrase may be familiar to you. If not, go and check that video out. We're going to go one, two. That was the first phrase we played last week. And then we're going to resolve this to our F chord. Again, it's going to be around that C shape, but I'm going to move up the neck as I do it. We're going to go... I love using these sixths to transition. And now we're up in this A shape, and I'm going to play. So our F chord. 
And of course, if I wanted to resolve back to C. F. So many things that you can do with this, of course. Let's hear that played along with the lick. So it sounds like this. One. I can just play around with this all day and that is a big part of how I like to practice so at its core those are the basic ideas now that's totally the wrong screen let's pick this one there we go <laughs> at its core those are the basic ideas we want to be able to use this backing track to improvise vocabulary over this one four now over the last couple of weeks on patreon I have been uploading different backing tracks but the same chord progression same tempos so you could take these same licks and you could apply them to different backing tracks because it's about learning to be able to integrate vocabulary over these chord changes the more you do this the more effective you are going to be at being able to visualize those chord changes and see nice ways of doing it if you find yourself playing c here without really thinking about it c and we need to get to f C F C many fun things you can do with this like i say that's a big part of how i like to practice so uh yeah get on with these licks and take uh some attempts at yourself over using that backing track again link in the description uh, and see what you can get over some one four chord progressions because when we start making these chord progressions this is a relatively boring chord progression i think we'd all agree with that right and you don't want to spend your life going but if i take something a little bit more musical outlining those chord changes uh, and that's a lot of fun lastly i just want to say a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters over on patreon could not do what i'm doing without you guys and your wonderful generosity and support we do have a top tier patron a 300 dollars patron currently uh, but i'm still waiting for you to email me back so if you're watching this email me back anthony um, <laughs> happy to promote your stuff so much love to you guys and if you don't want to check me out on patreon and get access to my weekly guided practice routines and weekly guided ear training sessions then consider checking out one of my many books available on amazon much love guys and i will see you for another video very soon get practicing